Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial we are going to be doing today on postnatal bone growth and specifically the elongation of long bones within the body. In our tutorial on endochondral ossification, we described that until you've reached your full height, the epiphyses of the bones will remain as cartilaginous tissue and today we'll discuss why. So the first thing we're going to see here on the screen is that I have a zoomed in picture of the epiphyses of a long bone. And as we can see, there's kind of a lot going on there. So let's see exactly what's happening. The first thing we're going to notice is there'll be chondrocytes or those cartilage producing cells on the epiphyseal side. And they are going to be fairly inactive. They're not going to be replicating very often. And that area is going to be called the resting zone. So we can see those chondrocytes all through that resting zone here. Just below the resting zone, when we get to the diaphysis side, that's when we start to see things happening. In this area, we are going to notice that chondrocytes are rapidly increasing in number and stacking on top of each other will be similar in appearance to a stack of coins. So here they're going through rapid mitosis and stacking, as we can see. And this stacking of the cells is what causes the epiphysis to be pushed away from the diaphysis. So the end of the bone to be pushed away from the shaft, as we can see here. This is going to result in us getting taller as we age. So we'll just make a note of that here. The diaphysis is being pushed away from the epiphysis. And this zone that all of this is occurring is going to be called our proliferation zone. And our proliferation zone in our long bone growth is going to be the first active area. So we've got our proliferation zone and we'll just make a note that this is the area that it's happening, this cell stacking. And in this area around the cells, we can also see that there's a fair bit of uh, what looks like empty space. And this is actually where the cartilaginous matrix is going to be deposited by those uh, proliferating chondrocytes. So cartilaginous matrix. As we move lower into the beginning portion of our diaphysis, we can start to see that the chondrocytes have enlarged quite a bit and that the lacunae or spaces around those cells are going to begin to erode and leave large empty spaces everywhere. This causes that cartilage matrix that has uh, previously been deposited there to start to harden and calcify. So we can see these enlarged chondrocytes everywhere. And we can also see that there's uh, spaces forming around those chondrocytes. Now this area that all of this is happening in is going to be called the hypertrophic zone, named after those uh, chondrocytes that are becoming enlarged. And we can also see this cartilaginous matrix here. And the fact that they are so far away from the actual cells now and not being provided with nutrient anymore from those cells, it's going to harden. So as we can see here, this uh, empty space around the chondrocytes is going to result in that hardened matrix created by the eroding lacunae. So we've got that written here and onto our next zone. Now our next zone specifically is called the calcification zone. In our calcification zone, the matrix has now fully invaded the medullary cavity of the diaphysis and our old enlarged chondrocytes are now going to start to die off and create even more empty space. And it's going to be sparsely filled, as we can see here, with that hardened cartilage that began to form in the previous step. This sparsely hardened cartilage is going to somewhat resemble stalactites that you'd see hanging from buildings in the snow. So we've got that down as a calcification zone. And I'll just quickly separate these two areas. So our hypertrophic zone up the top and our calcification zone down here. So what's going to happen within our diaphysis that will result in this cartilage being transferred into new bone? Well, the answer is the same as in our endochondral ossification. 
the osteogenic cells within the medullary cavity are going to perform two tasks simultaneously that will result in new bone. So we're going to have osteoclasts eating away at that uh, cartilaginous matrix at the same time as our osteoblasts are depositing new woven bone in that area. So we can see our osteoclasts and osteoblasts here and the osteoclasts will just uh, erode and eat away at that newly deposited cartilage at the same time as the osteoblasts deposit new bone. So this area here is going to be known as our ossification zone. Now as we can see we've had quite a few different things happen here in our um, postnatal bone growth so let's go through them one by one. In our first step in the active site, we had the proliferation zone where those chondrocytes were stacking. In our second step or hypertrophic zone, we could see that those chondrocytes were enlarging and are depositing new matrix. And in our calcification zone, that cartilage started to harden towards the diaphysis before the osteogenic cells in the uh, diaphysis or the medullary cavity completely hardened that area and created new bone. So we had our inactive area with somewhat dormant cells and our active area where our body performed several different steps that ultimately resulted in the lengthening of our bones. The last point I'll make quickly is that it's not until we reach our early 20s that the epiphyses of our long bones ossify and we lose those dormant chondrocytes and we achieve our full height. I hope this video has been helpful guys and as always thanks for watching.